Hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, let's start uh, my session. Uh, my name is Tsukika Shibata. Uh, come from uh, Tokyo, Japan on, on Sunday. It's uh, uh, after three days, but the three I'm uh, a little bit jet lag. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's, let's enjoy the uh, conference. First of all, uh, I'm, uh, again, my name is Tsukika Shibata. I, in my, uh, when my sub, I submit my proposal, I was working for NEC, it's, it's a Japanese company, but after that I leave my company uh, so that I uh, stepped away from my company, and, uh, but still very much interested in working for Linux and open source so that I joined the Linux Foundation and also Open Invention Network and so full time. Re I'm working for full of open source now. In my presentation, uh, normally uh, uh, talk about uh, statistics of uh, Linux kernel development and also uh, which one, uh, which version is the best for usable for the industry uh, actual use case. So let's, let's get started. Linux is uh, one of the most successful open source project and uh, continue growing in 28 years, expanding the uh, variety of use cases such as uh, IT enterprise, cloud, uh, networking, Android, and uh, embedded and IoT, and many other devices. And development uh, in, and releasing under uh, GPL version two. Uh, most of these uh, static six uh, uh, discussed by uh, Greg, Greg Cora Hartman or uh, Jonathan Corbett, who is a writer of uh, LWN.net. I will, again, I will try to talk about the uh, Linux development community. The, the develop Linux kernel is participating uh, over 1,700 developers and uh, 230 companies every, every releases and growing uh, yearly 1.5 million of lines of code and over 4,000 files are increased in every, every year. And again, uh, Linux was started in 1991, so now it's uh, 28 years. So it's not an uh, early uh, phase, it's uh, very much matured. And maintainers have a great skill to manage the subsystem and professional knowledge of its area of technologies. Uh, in the very early stage, every larger company have its own uh, operating system so that developers are working for their own uh, operating system or own hardware. But nowadays, many of the company have no such kind of uh, uh, proprietary operating system so that such kind of people go into open source and uh, gathering uh, to the Linux community. So that's the reason why the Good, great maintainer is gathering, gathering into a uh, uh, kernel community. And here is the latest status of Linux kernel. Uh, latest release version is a 5.2, and that was released in July 7, uh, last month. Lines of code were, is uh, 26 millions of millions, and the files are 64,000. And uh, that was uh, uh, development period was 63 days from uh, previous one, 5.1 version. 63 days means uh, nine weeks. So that, uh, most of the Linux kernel uh, is uh, uh, released in the mostly uh, Sunday. And uh, uh, another update will be also released in Sunday. So that nine weeks is uh, every Sunday, it, it, uh, update will be happen. I will uh, uh, show you some more details. And uh, current stable kernel is 5.2.9, so nine times update has happened. And the current development kernel is 5.3 RC release candidate five, so fifth times of release candidates already released. So how long, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, 5.3, release candidate. 
Ah, uh, yeah. For, yeah. It means uh, after 5.2 release and update release, it will, uh, th uh, third one, nine, ninth update is, is happening. That's why 5.2.9. Yeah, I will, I will uh, uh, show you some more details later. And how long does the kernel take uh, development? I was uh, count a number of days when uh, release was happened. So let's look at uh, uh, 20, year 2016. Uh, 4.4 was released in uh, 2016, January. And uh, 4.9 was released in uh, December. Uh, that was a uh, six release was happened. And each release was take uh, 63, four days, 63 days, uh, 70 days. 70 days means uh, 10 weeks. And for 2017, uh, it was uh, started from uh, February and uh, 4.14 was released in November. So it was a five release was happened in a year. And last year started from 4.15 in the January and uh, 4.20 was released in December. So six release was happened. It's uh, about uh, 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 two months or three months, less, less than three months. And for this year, 5.0 was released in March, and 5.1 was uh, May, and 5.2 was July. It's, it's very coincidentally, uh, March 3, May 5, and July 7. So maybe next one is September, hopefully September 9. But uh, September 9 is not a Sunday, so <laughs> maybe not good. <laughs> it's just a joke. But uh, it's easy to see. So uh, we are easy to uh, think about uh, what time frame the next kernel will be released. The kernel development is a kind of a, a nice development process, having a very nice development process. And what time frame the next kernel will be released is easy to estimate. That's a, a history of uh, uh, long years of uh, development. And another very important point is uh, Linux kernel development policy. The upstream is the only place to uh, send patch. The, it's a single place. Every uh, new features or fixes should be sent to upstream. And uh, very matured uh, uh, skill maintainers review each individual patches and then decide it will be accepted or not. So that, that's why Linux kernel can keep the higher quality. And, uh, and test it uh, with uh, every single patch uh, without any conflict. It's, it's also happening. And uh, well, that will need a well-coordinated process. But the uh, kernel developer is uh, discussing each other to create a better uh, development process. That's the current shape. So we need to understand upstream is the only place so that uh, uh, if we, sometimes we made uh, our own product and then create our own patches, but uh, that's not good. If we will uh, continuously release our own kernel, that may sometimes uh, make a difference for, uh, with the upstream and the, our own version. So that's a, a very important point. And here is a, a kernel development process. Uh, after the uh, 5.n was released, and then start uh, two weeks of merge window. Oh, I, I'm not yet uh, upload my slide, but uh, after my uh, presentation, then I will upload my slide, sorry. And uh, after uh, 5.n was released, two weeks of merge window will happen, so everyone can propose the newer patches, and then uh, Linus Torvalds will create a dash RC1 uh, release candidate, and every, mostly every week, next uh, release can candidate will be provided. So Linus will review 
the parties and then uh, release the release candidate mostly every Sunday. So developer can uh, download that uh, release candidate from Monday and until Saturday, the new changes will be submitted and then Linux will merge and release a dash RC to RC3. That's a development process. And, and mostly RC7 or 8 will happen. And, and then uh, uh, 5.n plus 1 will be released. That is, that is the why it's uh, seven weeks or uh, eight weeks will take in the release. Uh, or, or, uh, in the release. And here is a graph of how Linux kernel code is growing. It's, it's surprising, 20, it's 20 years, but still growing because of uh, not just uh, uh, IT enterprise, but also Mnet or some other use cases is happening and newer driver need to be merged so that uh, newer use cases will be every time happening so that the code is increase, increased. But uh, uh, Linux kernel have a, a nice uh, customization or no uh, configuration option so that unused driver is not be able to include in the kernel. So that code, source code is big, being big, but uh, if you wanted to use the unused driver, that would be uh, outside of binary in the outside of uh, uh, binaries. And but uh, this one is. Uh, uh, always uh, 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 up, uh, in upstream, uh, experimental code is always uh, pro produced and sometimes it's not mature. So people who wanted to use a uh, stable one, not the experimental one, so that such kind of use case, there is a stable kernel, Greg Crow Hartman who is a, a fellow of the Linux Foundation is maintained this stable kernel. Uh, this one is, uh, you ask me that uh, uh, 5.n plus n point one, a three digit of the kernel is uh, frequently released. It's, this is uh, uh, sometimes uh, one time per week or uh, sometimes uh, two times per week. And uh, this one is, uh, becomes the uh, end of life when next kernel version will be released. So that stable version is useful for the stable use case, but the end of life is just uh, 60 or 70 days. So it's not a full fit for the, our industry use case, or we wanted to use a more longer term kernel. Uh, to that kind of requirement, there is a LTS kind of is uh, there. That is uh, continue to uh, maintain the single kernel version. That is the LTS. The, also, uh, Greg is maintain this one, and then this one will be uh, released uh, just one time in in year and maintained two years. The initially that was all, all always. This one was uh, two years, but nowadays it was extended, and some part uh, someone is uh, maintained six years. This one may be uh, sometimes somewhat reasonable. Okay, and let's look back what I explained. Uh, latest kernel was 5.2, and uh, uh, stable one is uh, six nine time release is now happening. And already 5.1 stable one was a 21 time uh, released, but uh, becomes the end of life. And also, uh, current development kernel is uh, looking at a 5.3 version, but uh, now is a, a release candidate five. So maybe more three, two or three weeks later, 5.3 will be released. That's the current situation. So. Like this, we are very much easier to uh, imagine what time kernel will be released. But uh, sometimes uh, experimental uh, feature is create uh, some of a regression and that, that may take sometimes uh, extended. 
so that that's why we are need we are uh, uh, important to looking at what kind of kind of development is happening. Okay, so let's look going to uh, LTS. LTS, as I mentioned, only uh, a tree provider fix from the community, and uh, in the real use case, we don't need uh, experimental uh, features, just only a uh, uh, stable. Uh, tested and confirmed kernel, and the security fix will be released frequently we, until end of life. It's sometimes two years and sometimes six years. And LTS will be released uh, around November or uh, December time frame, so that we are able to imagine how, what kind of kernel version will be released in December, November time frame, and targeting that kernel we are able to uh, submit our own patches into the kernel, okay? Here is uh, what version is already released. In the, at the bottom side, 6.3.16 is maintained by Ben Hutchings. It was released in uh, 2014. He, he, ben Hutchings is uh, maintainer of Debian kernel. So Debian is committed to uh, provide a a stable kernel. But uh, other than that, Greg, Greg Hartman is maintained. 4.4 .4 was released in 2016 in January. Uh, initially, it was a two years term, but uh, now in maintaining uh, six years. So committed by uh, Greg. And uh, the end of life were projected to uh, February 2022. And also 4.9 also become the six years. And when I was presented a uh, uh, similar uh, slide in July, 4.14 was a two years term, but now it was extended to six years uh, because of uh, some large company is talking with uh, Greg and extended to, to six years. So we hopefully extend C419 also becomes a six years. It's, it's so nice, but uh, Greg is uh, just one guy. And in the growth, <laughs> six year maintenance period, maintenance period, and then maybe next year. This year, so another one will be released. Next year will be released. Greg should maintain six different kernel in, in a year. That's a heavy load so that uh, we may need to do something to more automated testing or much, much, much easier to maintain. That, that's a big issue in, uh, in not just the kernel community, but also users for, for us. That's a, a big issue. And it's uh, actually, I'm trying to do something, but not yet uh, solved. So now, now it's a... Uh, uh, a uh, very difficult point of time. Here is an actual use case of LTS. For Android, is already committed. The Android can AOSP will be used uh, six years. And 4.4, 4.9, 4.14 is uh, used by uh, AOSP. Actually, Google is uh, uh, always talking with Greg and help something and uh, asking him to expand uh, six years. And also Chromebook is initially used 4.4, uh, but now extend to 4.14. Uh, so latest Chromebook is yeah, using 4.14 kernel. And also Microsoft is already announced the Windows subsystem for Linux version 2, is running Linux, real Linux kernel on top of Hyper-B on, on, uh, uh, in uh, Windows 10. It is not a, uh, every user cannot use, but a test version. But the, still, the kernel version is 4.19, because Microsoft have knowledge about uh, uh, this LTS. And I like Raspberry, Raspberry Pi to use something. And I checked the uh, dry version of Ras Raspberry Pi kernel. It was also 4.19. And 
And also, Amazon is providing their own uh, kernel. Amazon Linux is using 4.14 to end 4.19. Uh, so we can see from the Raspberry Pi to cloud, Linux is running everywhere with the LTS version. So LTS is a nice choice that we can see. It's not a good thing, not only a good thing. Uh, I was count the number of commits included in the LTS. ELO1 is a LTS version and others are normal stable kernel. So it, let's look at 4.4. It's included of uh, 12,000 of commits are included already. But uh, 4.5 have uh, 900. So that huge amount of uh, com uh, patches are already provided. This kind of uh, change need to be applied a real uh, product. That may be uh, some of the uh, uh, issue for every, uh, most of uh, uh, embedded shipment is just shipment one time and have no fixes. That's uh, another issue. And let's see, uh, 4.9 is uh, uh, 30,000. 4.14 is 11,000. This kind of uh, large amount of fixes are provided by Greg, and, and this should be up, applied. That will be create a more secure devices. But uh, unfortunately, uh, some, 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 some people are not provided such, such, such kind of fixes. But in case of uh, Android, uh, Sony is shipping uh, AO, uh, uh, changes every month or every three months with this kind of uh, fix, included with this, this kind of fixes. So that, that's uh, one of the uh, uh, important point to, to do more uh, provider fix to the uh, already shipped product. And how many in the ERE uh, fix are provided? Uh, in case of 4.4, I count the total number and divide it by the year, so that 3,000, 4,000, 7,000 of fix are already provided. So ERE, this kind of huge number of patches provided from the community. So we uh, pick up these patches to uh, our already saved product. That's uh, uh, one of the issues. So how to handle such huge amount of patches the testing kernel for every LTS is actually hard. So use automated test, testing. There is uh, some of uh, automated testing open source framework, such as Fuego or Kernel CI or some other Raba from Linaro. That, that kind of uh, open source based te automated testing framework will help, help something. And also use common test suites and share the result. I believe almost all the company is doing their own test, but the result of the test is not shared, so that everyone is doing the same test when having the same problem, but uh, it's not uh, open. So if that kind of uh, uh, sharing will be happen, that may be uh, some decreasing uh, some of uh, uh, activities. And make consensus of common tests and develop it. We have uh, some LTP, or some other test packages, but uh, it's uh, kind of uh, community driven and uh, may sometimes not very much fit with uh, industry use case. So industry people need to get together and create uh, some common uh, test packages that, uh, and then that will be tested by uh, in the very early phase of the Linux kernel. Then almost all, all uh, some of the uh, problem will be fixed by the community and not come back to come later to our many of industry use case. That, that is uh, another uh, topic to be discussed. And uh, kernel CI is uh, already uh, actively working, but uh, uh, they are trying to create their own uh, project and by funding some of the company, but still not yet happen. 
because of uh, people don't want to uh, invest the testing phase. But uh, this one may be create a common place. So I really hope to establish kernel CI, but it still not yet happen. And uh, here is uh, my recommended step for the future. So expected next LTS version and release time frame around uh, December or November, put our own patches into upstream, and then that patch will be included and then very easy to maintain for longer time. And also choose a planned LTS kernel for your own product or services, and, and that will be maintained in six years. And uh, create a, a process to apply all the patches, including security fixes. And that will be uh, so nice, but I know it's not easy. So that, that, that so the why I, I will present it this this uh, uh, kind of session is that uh, tr try to solve this kind of problem. And uh, okay, another one is. Uh, so what is the next LTS version? Uh, I need a drum roll. <laughs> I actually discussed with Greg Hartman, and he told me 5.4 will be a next LTS version if uh, everything goes fine. And sometimes uh, last year, Linus was stopped his maintaining of the kernel, sometimes maybe delayed. Uh, sometimes another uh, uh, problem may be happen. The community is uh, gathering of the uh, contribution so that sometimes the uh, development phase will be, uh, uh, becomes more extended so that if everything is goes fine, uh, within this year, 5.4 will be released. So that, this one is uh, L next LTS. So, uh, okay. Most of uh, my uh, presentation is finished, but I'm trying to uh, talk about uh, what is happening in the kernel. I have two, two topics. One is uh, CPU vulnerabilities. Uh, actually, last year, 2018, in January, uh, Spectre or Meltdown problem was happened. That was a, a big surprise. We were believed that the CPU doesn't have any problem, but the spectra meltdown was a, a, a big issue, and the kernel community was uh, uh, working so hard even in January, and uh, uh, create a better solution to solve the, these kind of uh, uh, problem. In, that was happening last year, January, but uh, after that, in May, another Spectre program was announced. And then uh, in June, for, uh, some other one was released, uh, announced, and also in August, L1TF, it's called a foreshadow, that kind of uh, burn, another vulnerability was happened. That this means the, uh, this one maybe uh, found some other things, I thought. And then this year, May, MDS, it's called a zombie road or RIDL or fallout kind. Of, this kind of same kind of uh, CPU vulnerability was happened. And this means that we were getting some of the uh, impact that is is that what CPU we are using, uh, Intel, AMD, or ARM, and also what kind of generation of CPU, uh, like a Coffee Lake or some Sky Lake or some other, uh, and also 32-bit or 64-bits. These are big impact, and also what kind of kernel, Linux, Android, commercial OS such as Windows or Mac, or cloud OS like uh, Amazon, and also uh, other vulnerability environment like a uh, web browser or microcode. This is not just a CPU program, but also uh, uh, 
a more broader range of impact is happening. And also some software version is that all the uh, one have no workaround, so that it must be uh, latest software, uh, upgraded software, and the BIOS configuration and the performance degradation is happening, and then need to add more higher performance CPU. So that it's not just a single vulnerability, but also impact is so huge. And finally, should we expect further problem in the future? The answer will be, I think, yes. Maybe some other will happen so that the uh, right uh, answer is fix CPU. It takes some more time so that we need to think about how further vulnerability will, will be happen and then, then get this kind of impact will happen. That is the current situation. So, so regular kernel update is very important. CPU vulnerability terrace issue is happening everywhere. Not just software, but also in the CPU or microcode and so on. So security problem is also number one issue. If we were shipping embedded device to the customers, customer always ask us, are there any of security issues there? No, it's, it's not. Then we should provide a security fixes. And we must think with LTS, no patch providers, non LTS kernel. So this is also very important to use LTS. If we will not use LTS kernel, then this kind of security fix will not provide it. Greg is only uh, uh, provide a patch for this security fix for LTS kernel. That is, that is another important point. And sometimes we wanted to pick, cherry picking, oh, this patch can solve this problem. But uh, Greg always told us that patch is not a single one. Uh, further patch will be provided later. So chasing latest LTS is another very important point. I think uh, Greg's keynote will happen in Friday morning. So uh, if you are interested in, uh, please uh, hear his keynote. And again, applying all the LTS patch is the best way, not cherry picking. That's uh, one of the topic. Uh, second one is another uh, latest one. Fukushima. Uh, I'm not sure this one is pronounced it's okay because I'm Japanese. Fukushima is uh, provided by Google as a micro kernel based on Zircon. Micro kernel is very different from uh, a monolithic kernel. I was a kind of old guy, and uh, when I was uh, very young, maybe 20 years, 80 years old before, I was a member of a uh, 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 Minix user group, and in a store was sent patch to uh, Minix community. And in that time, first professor uh, Andrew Tannenbaum uh, becomes angry. The latest kernel should be micro kernel, but uh, Linus uh, submitted a monolithic kernel. So that, that was some of a debate, but uh, Linus didn't change his mind. So that uh, now Linux kernel is a monolithic. But uh, after 28 years later, the Fukushima is based on micro kernel. Uh, because of, uh, in the old time, CPU performance was very low. And uh, my, by using a micro kernel architecture, the inter-process inter communication, IPC, is very uh, uh, massively used so that uh, CPU performance is lower. And that, in that time, the performance of the kernel were not so good. So that's uh, one of the reasons why in a chosen uh, micro kernel. But nowadays, CPU performance much better than before. So maybe this one is so uh, good. And uh, Google uh, said that they expect it to be, to be used the next generation embedded devices maybe in five years. So that, uh, that may be very, very interesting. So maybe Fukushima can replace the Linux kernel. And in the contrast of Fukushima, 
Huawei announced uh, Harmony OS just this month. Uh, we are very easy to imagine that the uh, US and the China relationship nowadays is so hard, so that Huawei is already thinking about the uh, creation of uh, their own microkernel. It's uh, called uh, uh, Harmony OS. It's also a microkernel basis. They said it's, it's a safer or secure because of a microkernel. And uh, they have a deterministic latency engine that may be a kind of a, a, a higher performance or a, 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 some, some other uh, things. And uh, they uh, mentioned that the available in 2020, that is next year. So these, those two are very, very interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I must mostly come from an OS layer guy. These are very interesting. And I hope this one will be uh, grow up and can be used. And I would like to try this one. But how newer technology come closer to Linux? We are, it's a Fukushima and a Harmony OS becomes an open source. But open source is the community activity contributing code into upstream with diverse developers. Does uh, Fukushima, is uh, how many OS can do this? That's a big question. And also open and transparent development model. Everyone can imagine when that, can, uh, when that will be released, what kind of code will be included. That is an uh, open and trans transparent development, development model. But uh, Fukushima and uh, how many OS can do this? That, that's a question. And uh, security and bug fixing with trusted and uh, timely fashion. That is another point. And fi finally, long-term supported by the community. This is uh, not just to open up the code, but also create a better community is very important. So being the member of the community uh, is very important. And until these kind of structure can be established into Fukushima or Harmony OS, we must use Linux. That's a current situation, I believe. But uh, still, I'm very much uh, uh, hoping to uh, see what is happening in the microkernel base. And this one is the last one. So, so what is the key piece of maintaining open source in long term? I think that there is a three key point. One is a long term community community continue to provide a bank fix in longer term, maybe six years or more, and then may have an organization to support its activities. Greg Kohartman is a, a fellow of Linux Foundation, so that Linux Foundation is supporting his activities. So that's why he can continue to do that. So this, this one is not be able to happen in a single person. But the backside of the, this kind of organization is supporting. That is very important. And also, security fix provide security fix with trusted uh, process. The community is reviewing each other, each single individual parties. So that is a trusted process. And continue update and issue down, uh, less downtime and also respond to many different risks. That may be sometimes are not uh, owned by community, but the companies need to do that. And third one is uh, compliance. We are already uh, very much serious to looking at uh, our own product is uh, uh, matching with uh, open source compliance, the, sometimes of uh, GPL or some other things, but uh, not just a single uh, product, but also a uh, company is shipping many different products, and then corporate level of uh, uh, internal standards should be created for the compliance issue. And uh, also, there is a number of discussion happening, supply chain compliance, so that sometimes OEM, ODM vendor can do uh, different things that may happen. So open chain is trying to be more compliant for the or the uh, supply chain. That is another thing is happening. So these three is a key, key piece of uh, maintaining open source in long term. That is uh, uh, final uh, my slide. 
Thank you so much.